Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of CodeCop. This is where we go over bad advice posted on places like LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to learn from it and turn it into good advice. In today's video I have a very interesting post because it looks like good advice on surface level because the advice itself conceptually I think is correct but the implementation it is terrible. So let's see what we have here. I have the following post. Always return early. Code optimization tips, whatever. So we have this code over here, which looks so, so, so purposefully convoluted. We have if checks and else's and a bunch of returns and nesting, and it's, it's just a lot. And the solution is weirdly, in my opinion, worse or at least equally as bad. Now, obviously, the advice of return early is something I've talked about four years ago. It was like in my first year of YouTube, I said I don't use the else keyword basically to say I return early all the time and that reduces nesting and it makes your code look better. But the person took this advice and said what you should be doing instead is this. What the hell happened here? How did we go from okay, something convoluted but intentionally, to something that is so hard to read, even harder to read than what you had before. This method body with 10 array operators, your null checks on something that can't be nullable anyway. And it's like, there's so many things going on here that are wrong that I want to clear. And let's just quickly take a look at the text as well for this post because I want to give as much context as possible. So always use early return. I want to point out, this is not early return. This has nothing to do with early return. It's a completely different thing. Just restructuring your code, completely different. I'm going to show you in my code how this can be turned into a return early. This is not it, Chief. I don't know how you thought this is a good idea. And then we have the simplifying and optimizing code is a fundamental part of social development, blah, 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 chat GPT, chat GPT, chat GPT. Here's a practical example of how to use early returns. No, it is not a practical example of how to use early returns. Jesus Christ. Now, the benefits of readability, it is more straightforward and easier to understand. Are you crazy? What do you mean? Are you, are you serious? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Maintainability, reduce complexity. Have you ever tried to make any change in a convoluted ternary operator with nested ternaries? It is really, really bad. I don't know what this refers to, what this refers to, where I'm like splitting here. Like, what is going on? You would have such a better code base if you just changed this to the long version with early returns, except instead of this, whatever this is. Efficiency, edge case, handle immediately focusing the logic on processing or the main logic on processing. That can be right. And it is kind of true for how the person implemented this, but I digress. T-Tech, we embrace early returns to handle edge cases up front and keep your code clean and efficient. What the hell is going on here? And of course you have LinkedIn being LinkedIn, you need one like to blow up in the algorithm. So everyone's like, yeah, this is amazing. The comments are not as graceful, but the reactions are weird. I mean, you have your laugh emojis here, so I can understand that some people are like, what are you doing here? So let's take a look at the code. But before I do that, very quickly, I want to let you know that we just launched the early access to our Black Friday sale on Dom Train. So until the 2nd of December, you can get any course, any bundle, or Dom Train Pro at 40% off using code Black Friday 24 link in the description. So we have the code of this person here and I want to make a few comments on the code itself, right? So obviously these are not nullable. So why do you have null checks? Because I'm assuming you're using uh, nullable reference types at this point, but you know, maybe they don't, but I'm going to add these question marks to prove the point and have more nesting. So if you were to rework this with early tense, here's where you start. First, there's no reason for these else keywords to even exist. Like, zero. You ideally, and at least in my code, I've never used in the past, I don't know, eight years, any else keyword in my code. It's just not needed because of the way I return early. I actually practice what this person is trying to say, but it's doing such a bad job doing it. Then, if you want to return early, you change this if statement and you invert it and you say, if this is null, then return null. You can see the flow. So let's just assume that we are here now. Now we can do the same inverting here and we can say that if the count is less than zero. So you can see the bad cases first, the validation first, 
then return a new list like this. And now you can say empty collection as this person is saying. Now here's a free tip on top of everything we've talked about. You should never, ever, ever return null collections, ever. That's why I'm against that this is nullable in the first place because it shouldn't. But more importantly, the return should not be nullable either because you should never, ever, ever, ever return null collections. Return empty collections. Say array dot empty. Say um, what's the other one? Enumerable dot empty or say just an empty list. So by doing that, it means that I can now merge these two statements and I can say if this is null or the count is more than zero, I'm returning an empty collection. And in fact, I can merge them into a, a pattern. So I can say something like this. Now, not everyone likes patterns. I do like patterns. I use them quite a lot. So you can now get to this. And if you really, really, really want to use a select statement and a list, which I wouldn't use because for this use case, it depends on what the complexity is in here. But if you really, really want to use it, then do one of this and you go from that monstrosity you had to this, which in my opinion is way, way better. And if you really, really, really want to use a tenary operator, then you can just do this. Now, in my opinion, this is not readable. This is not nice. It doesn't add value. Yes, it is a single line. So you, you're saving some lines, but I've seen tenary operators being broken down on their breaking points as well, at which point is this even readable? Like, I'm not quite sure about any of this. In my opinion, if I was to write this code, this is what I would have. I think this reads very nicely compared especially to this monstrosity. I think it is way, way better and you know exactly what is going on. And we have the return early thing as well. We have no nesting. We are using link to make things a bit more uh, readable, which in my opinion, this is a very uh, elegant way of using link. There's not much going on here and it's pretty performant as well, by the way. So nothing to worry about on that front. But I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And would you do things differently? Which approach would you choose? And what do you like the most? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.